So Devendra, can you quickly describe about your roles and responsibilities, like how much experience you have and what all you do in your day-to-day activities? Okay. Uh, myself, Devendra, I have 3.4 years of experience in Java, and I have worked on technology like Java, JT, Spring, Hibernate, Equal, Ferial, and Angular. Angular, which version? Six. Six, huh? Okay. Yeah. So, what are your roles and responsibilities? Like, what you do in daily? Yeah, uh, like I was involved in a requirement gathering and uh, design and development process, and I was in, uh, involved in implementing uh, implementing of functional as per requirement, and I was also involved in like uh, ongoing production support issues. We'll fix them. Yeah. Okay. So, how much how much do you rate yourself in Java? Out of ten? Yeah, seven. Seven in Spring, Spring and Spring Boot. Yeah, uh, it's uh, seven. Seven in Hibernate. Hibernate not much work on them. Okay. Uh, five. No, oh, okay, fine, fine. Uh, in Angular. Angular also fine. Okay, fine. So, can you explain me like what are OOPs concepts in Java? Yeah, OOPs concepts are written such uh, encapsulation. Abstraction. Okay. Polymorphism. Yeah, like, can you explain in detail a bit? Yeah. Uh, inheritance uh, means uh, getting the uh, overclass, uh, like uh, superclass variables, um, variables and methods from which superclass to subclass. Inheritance. It's called inheritance. In the polymorphism, it having uh, like two types. Uh, one is method over uh, dynamic polymorphism and uh, static polymorphism. And uh, yeah, it's example like method overloading and method overriding. Method overloading means uh, uh, if you have uh, multiple methods with the same name with a different parameter list. Uh, method overriding uh, also over- override the superclass method with the subclass method. And, uh, and abstraction. Uh, coming to the abstraction, it, uh, like it is used for storing the uh, necessary data and hiding the unnecessary data. And encapsulation. Uh, uh, encapsulation process of binding coding uh, coding part and binding the data in a single unit is called encapsulation. Okay, like how do you achieve encapsulation? Uh, encapsulation, yeah, by using like uh, Java beam. And like how, like how can you say that uh, we have achieved encapsulation using Java beam? Yeah, in Java beam we have uh, like we have uh, specified the verbiage with private numbers and uh, you provide the data and data method. And yeah, private methods methods will uh those are attributes only but class only. By using uh data and setup methods we can uh access that number source and the outside of the class. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So when in which scenario we will go with dynamic polymorphism and in which scenario we will go with static polymorphism? Yeah, uh dynamic polymorphism uh, the polymorphism exists at runtime. No, no, in which scenario we will go for that? I know you have already explained like what are those, but in which scenario I will go with uh, dynamic and which, in which scenario we should go with static polymorphism? Yeah, for the scenario like, uh, uh, yeah, if you have same method, you can access it uh, 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 multiple times. Like, uh, suppose you have like an uh, abstract class. And we will, uh, using that abstract, abstract class implementation multiple times, uh, by using method overriding concept, we can use it. That is the dynamic plan method. Okay, okay. So, have you worked on uh, um, collections? Yes. So, on what all classes you have worked ex- extensively? Uh, hash map and uh, array list. Okay, these two. Hash map and array list, right? So, like in which scenario we'll go for hash map and in which scenario we'll go for array list? Uh, hash map it will store the uh, like data in the three variables, uh, key and uh, data values, uh, value type, hmm. both are objects. Key contains the unique value and value contains the uh, uh, data. Um, yeah, if you have like, uh, you can get the, from the DB, you can get the values from the ID and value by using uh, uh, hash map. So, okay, what will happen if I insert the same key twice? Uh, like, uh, it's not, like, not allowing duplicate value. 
will will i get any error or like what will happen no no if i am uh, inserting twice a uh, same value i am inserting twice sorry same key i am inserting twice what will happen it throw error only. it will throw error okay in this scenario will you go for array list uh, error list uh, yeah uh, uh like uh, yeah, you have uh, to read the data from the database and you will look at the loop and showing that the uh, value in the ea in the uh, array list now you can uh, like if you store the um, it is for the value um, Mm. Yeah, uh, can you can you can you give an idea on features of array list? Okay. Like why what benefits we get when using array list? Yeah. Uh, array list uh, is following like uh, um, it's uh, all elements are uh, based on its index order. Mm. It follows the index order and uh, and. Uh, yeah it um allows multiple null values okay it allows duplicate values okay mainly error list while extracting the data from the db and we will show it in uh, uh, vsi we will use it error list okay okay fine uh, so you have worked on only two classes the hash map and error list uh, uh, also, like, uh, sorry uh yeah uh in hash set and uh, uh, you have worked on concurrent hash map uh, not worked on but i have knowledge on yeah uh, so what is concurrent hash map uh, can yeah. you give some yeah. concurrent hash map is mainly used for uh, when we iterating the loop huh? uh, uh when we iterating the loop we will insert the data into the within that loop only we will insert any data into the uh, um, concurrent hash map uh, it will throw the normal hash map will throw the error okay by using concurrent hash map so it will uh, it, uh, it will not throw the any error concurrent modification error it will um, will uh, it will add the element to the uh, into the map while iterating the element yeah. like it will follow the segment locking mechanism not it will enter uh, hash map locking mechanism Oh, okay okay fine uh so uh, do you have any idea on string constant pool or string pool constant yes uh, what is it uh, string constant uh, like uh, yeah um when we create a object by using uh, declaring string s equal to abc then it will store the uh, the value in string constant pool area hmm uh, Uh, yeah, uh, it will not store in heap memory. Uh, heap memory will uh, store the values like object values in uh, string constant pool area. Uh, it will store like uh, uh, it will load on uh, while class loading, like. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. So, uh, uh, have you? Do you have any idea on string builder or string buffer? Yes. So, can you tell me, like, put some light on those two things, two classes, like when we should use them, or what benefits we will get, or what disadvantages we have in using those classes? Yeah, string uh, builder is mainly syn uh, not synchronized run. String buffer is synchronized. Uh, synchronized run is uh, it's not allowing more than uh, uh, one thread at a time. Okay, only that di that is the difference. uh main difference is that one and uh, yeah mainly uh, string builder is uh, if you have like a uh, like the speed of the performance it's not allowing you know, like uh, not following uh, so which will have more uh, which will have good performance among the both like string this string builder only because of not synchronizing okay okay So, do you have any idea immutable class? Uh, 
What is immutable class? Immutable means uh, yeah. uh, if you create an object, uh, it will store the uh, its state in only at, uh, at the creation of time. It's not only modification at uh, modification on its content. So what will happen if I modify the content? Yeah, uh, like uh, uh, yeah, you will get previous data, existing data only. So it won't get modified. You are saying the content won't get modified. Yeah, notable it will modify. Uh, still, uh, like uh, immutable is not allowing. Uh, not allowing on. Uh, like we will get an error when we try to modify the content. No, I will not get an error, but uh, we will get the um, uh, like previous data only. Okay, can you tell me like how can we create an immutable class in Java? Yeah, you can declare the like... Uh, uh, yeah, you can declare the class as a final. Hmm. So, why uh, why we should declare a class as a final? So, it's not allowing for method overloading. Uh, so, uh, it will not allow method overloading if we have yeah. final. Okay. And uh, declare the all variables with uh, yeah uh, declare the all variables with final. Hmm. So its value is fixed, not uh, is not be changed. And uh, declare the uh, like a private constructor, so it uh, not allow uh, it uh, you can create the object only one time only for that particular part. See, the object creating one time is singleton, right? Yes. I am asking about immutable. Yeah, okay. Alright, so, uh, declaring the variables with the final, so uh, it can't be changed once it's fixed. So how I am asking, like how can we achieve that? Uh, uh, string is an immutable class, right? Yes. So, like what might, might be the logic inside string class, even it is a normal class only, right? Yes. So what can be the logic, like how it is having, why it is having only, like what logic it might be having that it is called immutable class? Yeah, like, uh, okay, uh, 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 what is singleton in Java? Yeah, uh, it, it, is, it is able to create only one object for it. It is able to create uh, only one object for uh, application. More, it's not able to create more than one, one an object. Okay, one instance per an application. Yes. So what is the difference between singleton in Java and singleton in Spring? Yeah. Uh, singleton is, uh, in Java, it creates the object. In, uh, coming to the Spring, uh, it will create the single instance on Beam. Okay. Yeah. So even even in normal Java also it will create one instance only, right? Yeah. For bean or for a class, a class is or bean is nothing but a class, right? Yeah, yeah. So what is the difference I'm asking? Yeah, mainly this one only. Like uh, if you create the object, uh, if you uh, create instance for the bean, uh, it will store the only one instance in the uh, string constant. Uh, string Okay, okay. Uh, any differences between an abstract class and interface? Yes. Abstract class is having a, a, um, two abstract and concrete methods. Interface is only allowing only abstract methods. Okay. In which version of Java you are working currently? Sorry? In which version of Java you are working? 1.7 and 1.8. 1.8 you are working? Yes. So, can you list down few features of Java 1.8, like what all new things added in 1.8? Yeah. Uh, functional interface and uh, Lambda expression screen. What is yeah. functional interface? Yeah, fun uh, functional interface. Uh, interface is having one, it contains only one aspect method, it's called well a functional interface. Okay. And do you have any experience on comparator or comparable class? Yes. yes. Or can you like can you tell something about these two classes? Like in which scenario you will use what class? Yeah. Um, yeah. Comparable is uh, in comparing the objects for uh, it itself only. So what is the method we need to overwrite in comparable? Um, compare to. 
what is comparable like it is an abstract class or an interface it is an interface okay now uh, what is uh, coming to come an interface uh, hmm. it's having compared to method hmm? uh, so it is an interface yeah 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 uh, it's having compared to method so we can use it by using uh, lambda expression so like uh, yeah uh, for the lambda expression we uh, mean like it is useful to store the reference variable for the uh, Mm. That functional interface, so you can use it by your uh, that comparator in lambda expression. Okay. What about comparator interface? Yeah, comparator interface uh, is having a compare method. Uh, it is mainly used to put the uh, like compare the two different objects. A different objects in the sense. Like uh, if you uh, mainly these comparable and comparator will uh, use in. Uh, to start the element. Yes. So, uh, comparator is uh, like uh, it will uh, uh, like compare the two objects. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Like in which scenario we should use comparator, or in which scenario we should use comparable? Yeah, compare uh, like a comparable. Uh, it's following like a default starting algorithm by using compare to method, and by compare to uh, comparator will you uh, the defined uh, starting algorithm when we have requirement with uh, all the elements as per the user defined then we go for the comparator compared to uh, like uh, comparable it will follow in the default starting mechanism okay so you have uh, worked on spring boot yes so can you tell me like what is spring boot yeah spring boot uh, like uh, it's mainly find the uh, um, Uh, like what are the features of Spring Boot? Like yeah. everybody is running behind Spring Boot, Spring Boot, no? Yeah. Like why we are running behind Spring Boot? Yeah, uh, like uh, it's having uh, all the dependencies by using a uh, um, starter dependency. Start. So we can uh, like we now no need to declare the all the dependencies by using a uh, uh, in the From that XML file, it has it having default uh, starter dependency, and it having the uh, default uh, mm, server as a tomcat. Uh-huh. So it mainly useful to produce the uh, burden of the code. Uh, it mainly concentrates on the business problem, not uh, not all the configuration. Okay, you have worked on Spring as well, right? Spring boot only. Spring has yeah, knowledge. Oh, you have knowledge. Yeah. So what are the different modules in Spring? Uh, spring uh, like I was saying, like Spring only. Mm. So you just have knowledge. You don't have hands-on experience, right? Yes. Or can you tell me something about dispatcher servlet in Spring MSC? Yeah, dispatcher servlet is that has a front-end control. Uh, you just request to and you submit that to um, particular application. It will get to the uh, dispatcher servlet, and dispatcher servlet is again for the particular uh, controller, and it will. Uh, The request is by that to the particular controller, and uh, the uh, the controller will handle that uh, special request. Okay. So anything, uh, like can you define what is dependency injection? Yeah. Yeah, dependency injection. Yeah. Uh, uh, it will mainly reduce the hardcoded dependency from the application class and providing the dependency by using some external files. Uh, either XML files and such or some, yeah, such a configuration, such a method. Okay, in how many ways we can do that? Uh, by using XML files and Java objects in such a configuration method. Okay, okay. Like what? Ah, uh, can you explain what is IOC or inversion of control? Yeah, inversion control is the mechanism into which the dependency injection. Um, like it will mainly reduce in the hardcoded dependency at the runtime and providing uh, uh, like dependency uh, based on XML file. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you do you have any idea on like what are the different scopes that Spring yeah. supports? Yeah. Yeah, can you tell me some single time prototype and uh, uh, application scope? 
So what is prototype like? A prototype scope it will create a, a, for the ever beam it will uh, ever beam uh, beam installation it will create the uh, one nice object. Oh. Compared to single turn uh, it will create only one instance for the uh, for that beam. Okay. What is auto wiring? Yeah, uh, auto wiring uh, internally providing the um, dependency injection. Uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, we have a controller class. We have a dependency injection of the like we have. Uh, we have to access the uh, service class layer method. So we will auto wire the uh, auto wire the service class in the controller class. We will access by using its presence from its presence in controller class. Access the Yeah, uh, service class method. Okay. It mainly injects the dependency of uh, dependency. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, do you know any annotations or have you worked on any annotations in Spring Boot or Spring? Yeah, Spring Boot. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, what are diff- annotations you have worked? Hmm. Ah, uh, can I tell you the list? All the annotations. No, no. Just few. You tell me, like yeah. few main things. Yeah. Uh, the rest uh, controller, the rest uh, rest controller, the uh, rest first mapping. Oh, okay, okay. So, what is the difference between the rest controller and the rest rest controller? The yeah, rest controller is mainly used to return the model view object as a return type. Hmm. Where model contains the data and uh, uh, view as a uh, specific uh, UI name. Hmm. And uh, rest controller it will uh, uh, it will return the um, Oh, sorry, your voice break. What is that? Yeah, controller is mainly. Yeah, written. controller ahead. Rest controller. Yeah. What will it return? Yeah, it will send. It will return the model with data and response body. Response body. Okay. So yeah, coming to the annotations, uh, uh, request mapping. Yeah. Uh, Add the rest service. Add the rest controller. Add the rest uh, repository. And uh, add the rest entity. Okay. Column, the rate ID. So these are Spring annotations or yeah, Spring Boot? Yeah. Spring Boot annotations. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So you are you have idea on Hibernate as well, right? Yes. So what is Hibernate? Hibernate is a URL tool, object uh, relational mapping tool. Here uh, every object considered as a ob- uh, like a object will um, considered as a uh, like a DB table. Yeah. Mm. Every object is a DB table, you are saying? Mm. No, like uh, every object it will contain the data, and uh, the uh, the columns will be treated as a uh, DB column, and its values can be stored in a DB uh, column rows. Okay. Ah, uh, there are two files right in Hibernate. You know, mm. there are two important files in Hibernate. The configuration and the mapping. Yeah. So, what are those two files? What will they do? Yeah. This configuration uh, it will contains the uh, configuration DB details uh, like uh, uh, database user name and like password and all these things. It will driver name. And uh, coming to the mapping file, it will contains the um, uh, like. Uh, Yeah, it will contain the all uh, uh, yeah, it contains the data of the uh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you do you have an idea in, on exceptions? Yes. What are exceptions? Can you define like what is the difference between exception and an error? Yeah, uh, error is. Uh, Uh, we cannot solve the problem uh, like uh, problem uh, problematically. Yeah, uh, like uh, it will uh, it cannot solve the problem uh, problematically. Exception is uh, unexpected event uh, occurred at run time. It causes the abnormal termination of the program, and we can solve it problematically. So, how do you handle exception? Uh, yeah, like we can use uh, try catch blocks and. Uh, 
and throw my touch and for three different exceptions we can use it like that and here we can use the three or two as a different exception. Okay, you you are you have uh, I was going through your profile. You are having experience in RESTful. Yes. So what are RESTful services? Like how do we create? Yeah, we are uh, RESTful itself. You can uh, access the specified URL by using uh, specified resource by using the uh, URL, and it will find the uh, expected URL, and it will. Uh, uh, like it will ensure that specified method in that uh, in that class and give the results. Yeah. Okay. So what is the implementation that you have used here? REST implementation? Uh, just RS. Okay, okay. So what are the methods inside uh, REST? Uh, like we have something called put post. Yeah, okay, yeah. Put post and uh, like delete um, get method. Okay, can you tell me about uh, these four methods? Like when we should use these three, these four yeah, methods? That, that is mainly used for the, um, to get the data from the DB. Uh, post, uh, post is used for the, to save the data into the DB. And uh, put is used to update the data and delete is used to uh, delete the data into uh, delete the data. Okay, can you? Uh, do you have any idea on HTTP status? Like when we should set what HTTP status to the yeah. uh, when uh, like what is like two hundred? Uh, success related code. Okay. Okay. For what is five hundred? Five hundred or like uh, uh, client uh, like server side address, uh, server not found like that. Okay. Four hundred client side address. Four hundred one is bad request. Four hundred two. User unable to user not having access. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Like, uh, okay. Coming to the Angular, uh, like, what is Angular actually? Can you tell me? Uh, Angular is a JavaScript uh, JavaScript framework. JavaScript uh, or TypeScript? First 1.2 was some basic version is JavaScript framework and 1.2 is using TypeScript. Okay. From from the two Angular version. Huh? So why when we should use Angular like? Angular, uh, yeah, uh, it will uh, mainly it will improve the performance of the application and it will have uh, uh, three different structure of uh, handling the data binding. It has some features like uh, uh, two-way binding and. Uh, uh, what is two-way binding? Yeah, you can. Um, if you want to change in the uh, JavaScript file, it will affect in UI. And if you change in UI file, it will affect on uh, module class. Uh, what is UI file? Sorry? What is UI file? It's like template. Template? Yeah. HTML file file. Okay, HTML file you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So you have worked uh, on Angular 6, right? Yes. So, what all new things came up in Angular 6? Yeah, from the uh, type, uh, in the Angular 2 version only, it will change the all, uh, uh, from 1.2 to 1.2, it will change the all the required things like uh, uh, object oriented features and uh, this type scripted and this all these things and from the one point six not major only like some some features are uh, not remembered. Okay, okay. So uh, what is lazy loading? Any idea? Yeah. What is it? Uh, lazy loading uh, like uh, it will load the when you requested only. Uh, it's not load uh, okay, sorry man, the call got disconnected. Yeah. So uh, I was asking about the lazy loading thing. Yeah, lazy loading and uh, yeah, lazy loading, uh, like it will load the particular request while uh, uh, initiating and it not load in the, uh, like, uh, entire object in, uh, in the application. Yes. Okay. Uh, any idea on life cycle hookups in Angular? Yeah. yeah. So what are they? Yeah, like uh, ng on init and uh, ng on changes. 
and uh, uh, Okay, uh, you have worked on Git. Yes. Uh, can you name a few commands in Git? We use a tool like Hostree. We have uh, all the like, uh, functions in that tool only. Yeah, like command, uh, like command, commit, push, and pull, uh, all these things. Okay, you are using Jira. That's what it is. Not Jira also, but this uh, Git, uh, we are using the tool like Hostree. Yeah, yeah Git, I know. You are using, when using Jira, right? For what yeah. you are using Jira? Now we will try the bugs and uh, bug status. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, like uh, coming to the DV, so oh, how many types of joints are there? Uh, joints, uh, uh, inner joints, outer joints, and uh, select joints. Uh. What is select joint? Huh? What is select joint? The third one you said. Uh, self joint. Self joint, you said, oh sorry. Uh, cross joint. Uh, we mainly use the inner join and left, uh, left or right join. Okay, what is inner join? Inner join, it will uh, like, uh, uh, if you have two tables with the same ID and we will get the data from the, with the ID, we will uh, in, uh, we'll join the both tables with the inner join. We will get the common data between two tables. Okay, okay. What is left or left join? Yeah, it will, take, it will get the all the uh, data from the left table and uh, um, and uh, and common data between both tables. Like it will get the all the tables from the left side only and the matching data on the uh, right side table. Okay. So you follow waterfall or agile? Agile. Agile? Yes. So what all ceremonies you attend or you follow? Like uh, we have uh, sprints only, like sprints based uh, development. Okay. Yeah, uh, at the screen we have some time to develop and uh, we will give that, uh, like we will develop and uh, deliver the code. Oh, okay, how many team, uh, like how many days of sprint it will be? Uh, it's like uh, one week like that. One week sprint? Mm. So how many team members? We have ten, uh, 13 members. 13? Yeah. All are developers? No, uh, uh, we have your testers also. Oh. Testers and front end developer handlers. So, like, what is the advantage of uh, this sprints uh, when we, when we were having waterfall model? Uh, like, yeah, what like, benefit Agile is providing us? Yeah, uh, Agile is providing like uh, uh, it will develop. Uh, uh, previously, that uh, previous model is when we development is fixed, we can't uh, change the modification on that model. As well as, uh, like, uh, we'll change up the modification, like that. Okay, uh, do you, uh, like, what all meetings or ceremonies you attend? Uh, means, uh, this, uh, mm, this mechanism related or client requirement? No, no, no you, you uh, status, what, uh, yeah, status calls, we'll be having re uh, grooming, everything will be there, right? There are a few yeah. ceremonies which you attend or meetings you call. Yeah. So what all meetings you attend? Yeah, we have like uh, every uh, every weekly status call and uh, uh, what is the status of the, that um, end of the week, what are they doing in the entire, uh, what are the releases, uh, how many bugs is there, like, uh, Resolved and uh, total uh, status related of the entire week and any blocker will uh, discuss on the stuff. Okay. Okay, okay. Right, okay. So I am done from the technical perspective. So do you have any questions for me? Yeah, I mean. You don't have any? Yeah, I mean. Okay, uh, that was nice talking to you, Devendra. Thanks yeah. for your time. Yeah. Uh, HR will update yeah, you on this. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know, yeah. I am just a developer. I need to forward your things to manager. My manager will forward it to HR. Then okay. HR, you will get the call. Thank you. Okay, thank you.